So now if we try to light this directly. Hi, so I've got here this generator which is able to produce very explosive oxyhydrogen gas. And today I want to try whether or not I can use this to make a very hot torch with which I I'll be able to do some glass work. If you want to build this generator yourself, I'll put a link in the descriptions with the instruction that with the instructions that I followed. Let's start by filling this with some distilled water. So we are using about 2.2 liters. And to that I'll be adding some potassium hydroxide flakes. So this will be the catalyst for the reaction. At like 20 grams, so we have a 1% solution. Alright, perfect. Now we need to give this a good stir just to make sure all of the potassium hydroxide is well dissolved. This is looking good. Just check the pH. Yep, highly basic. Now let's measure the electrical resistance or the conductivity. 170 kilo ohms, okay. I will just insert the electrodes now. Now we can screw on the cap and then we can start the experiments. Should be nice and tight now, I hope. Let's again measure the resistance between both electrodes, about 5 mega ohms. So this is definitely not shorted out, which is good. To power this I'll use this welding transformer. This has a positive and a negative terminal and it's able to supply a lot of amps. So high current density and that's exactly what we need if we want to produce a lot of oxyhydrogen gas in a short amount of time. Right, I've wired everything up, so let's try to turn it on and hope it doesn't explode. Make sure the... oh, the setting is at minimum, not at maximum. Alright, besides that there's too much water in the bubbler, this is working amazingly well. So I set it on DC current. So that's 15 volts, that's pretty good for an electrolysis water. So now if we try to light this directly, that's obviously a bad idea. <laughs> Hope I haven't destroyed this now. <laughs> now in order to avoid this from happening again I have here the syringe with the blender removed and on top of this I will add a cannula. If we add this to the bubbler, we might be able to avoid this very same reaction from happening again. But this is also very dangerous, because we might be shooting this very... Well, not very dangerous, but we might be shooting this cannula somewhere, so you definitely wear to need to wear eye protection for something like this. Okay, let's just be brave now and give this another shot. And now let's try to light this. Wow! Wow! This didn't work. Oh wow. Oh, this thing is broken. Tube get exploded out of here. <laughs> so I need to add some hot glue to fix this. Okay, let's add some hot glue. While the hot glue is solidifying, I'll add some steel wool in the syringe as a further flashback protection. There we go. And now let's just give this another shot. Uh-oh. Let's hope this lid is still tight enough. Alright, last attempt with this setup. Okay, this is no longer tight enough. Yeah, it's coming out of the side right here. It's no good. Okay, glued together a new bubbler. Looks ugly, but it's safer because there's no more glass. 
Now let's see if the steel wool will help me. Okay, it looks like it's working. Wow, it happened. <laughs> no idea. It stopped working and now it's working again. <laughs> okay, let's try if I can light this. Oh my god! Yes! Oh. Well, that was something at least. Maybe I need a different canyon now. Okay. I will put on here this much shorter canyon. Let's try again. Fingers crossed. Oh, shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. Stop. <laughs> That's not exactly what I wanted to happen. Okay, I need a new syringe. Okay, attempt number 5349. No explosion yet. Let's try to light it. Nothing. Let's submerge this bubbler in water to see if this is tight. Okay, no, it is not. Hmm. It's not good. Let's just try again anyway. Oh my god, it works. It works! It works! Okay, it's hard to focus. That is if we put a stick in there. Wow. Now let's try if I can actually made some class. This was the original objective. Oh, it went out. Now that's a Pyrex tube, so it should be a very high melting point. And yes, we are indeed able to melt it. Now the question is, could I make an end cure with that? Well, apparently the flame is, isn't particularly stable. Well, I guess I would need to increase the flame size a lot for that, because this is just way too slow. Now let's use this huge beaker to see where else we are losing glass. And did I say glass? I meant gas. <laughs> okay, this beaker is not big enough, but looks like this is really the only area. That's odd. I would expect a much bigger flame then. Hmm. No idea. Maybe it's getting lost right here. Well, at least we've managed to make a super hot flame. Now, for the last experiment, I want to see what the snail house does in the hot flame. Wow, that's bright. We're probably getting some calcium oxide. It's really, really, really bright. Yeah, that looks scary. <laughs> Oops. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And hopefully see you next time. Bye bye.